You're listening to another life-transforming message from Awakened Church with campuses in San Diego and Salt Lake City. To find out more about us, go to awakenchurch.com. Friday night, I take my kids out. I've had my kids for three days. I'm jacked on caffeine. Pray for my adrenal glands. So Friday, we're down at Belmont Park. There's this zip line. I'm not thinking anything. I told my wife, I got this, baby. Don't worry about it. I'm going to preach like a mix-up between authority one, authority two, mix it up for breasty. It's going to be easy. I don't need a message prep. I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit. Boom. She goes, okay. I'm like, I got these kids. I'm going to wear them down. Okay. Overconfident is the word I want to say. So we're at Belmont Park. I'm with Rex Crane and his daughter. These kids are having so much fun just wearing us down. We do the zip line, and my little boy Maverick gets at the edge. We're talking like 40 feet up. He's looking over, and I see him totally fold like a deck chair. And I'm giving him all the motivational speeches, locker room. I was about to get the clip from, you know, you know, something with Denzel Washington. You know, it's like I was just going to show him, but he just, he folded. And then it was cute because Kira, Rex's daughter, comes up next to him and goes, Maverick, I'll do it. And then when she got up and she saw it, you could see her fear grip her. And what was amazing, Rex got right underneath her. He's looking straight up at his daughter. He goes, don't worry about it, baby. I'll catch you. And I was just like, that is what God is doing for his people. I was like, she let fear overcome her, but her daddy spoke to her. She looked at Maverick and then just went all in. And I was just like, Okay, Holy Spirit's doing something in me right now, messing me up. She zip lines her face up. Then I saw my little boy get up there, and then he's now got a second wind. He gets up, and I could tell. He looks down. He's fierce. I just did the same thing Rex did. How many know that's a smart thing? <laughs> if he's praying for people getting him healed, I'm just, all right, that's what I'll do. All right, what do you say? Okay, I'm doing that then. And I said, there, I'm like, don't worry, Maverick. I'll catch you. And he just looked at me, and he jumped. He zip lined, and then you couldn't stop those kids. And by the time they were gone, Micah went up there and she just did it. But I, I, it was such a picture. And I said, oh, that was powerful. And he goes, well, good. You're going to change your message. Yeah. Well, you know, there's not much time after you put your kids down. You're totally wasted. And you're like, okay, now I got a, got a message prep. But God knows what he's doing. And the whole message, it, it's called overthrow darkness. Okay, overthrow go. darkness. And what I want to do is the first thing he did was he says, you start declaring a thing over this, over this campus. So I always get up and I have my confession of faith. I do, but we're not going to do it today because God actually gave me something very specific for this campus. And so if we could read it together, that'd be great. So I'm just going to say, if you want to repeat it, that's great. You ready? Yeah. Okay. I declare, I declare that, I that I am created, created in, the in the image of God. I can, I can. do all things. Do all Through Christ, Christ, who is my strength, strength. I declare declare, with God, God, all things are possible. possible. Today, Today, I open my mind mind to think like God, to to be like God, God, and do life life the way God intended. intended. Come Holy Spirit, Spirit. help me, me. awaken my thinking thinking. so I can elevate my life in Jesus' name. Come on. All right. So we're going to go fast here, but I want to I want to give you some things that got me tweaked uh, this week. I read this Barna study, and in this Barna study, it was talking about what fear has done uh, in the church uh, over the last two years. And so I was reading this. I'm like, there is no way Awakened Church is in that study because those results will fire anybody up. They're saying that there is no difference between what people in the world were experienced and those in the church. They started going through all the studies, and I don't want to depress you, but it was just like, well, I thought we were called to be the salt. Where's the lick test? The salt and the light, yet this study was just saying the same things that were up 3,000% mental health disorders in the, in, in, in the secular world, same in the church. Wow. There was almost no distinguish between what was going on in the world and what was going on in the church. I'm like, how is that possible? And they talked about how big fear was. It's almost like, sorry, let's just talk about how big the mountain is, how big the problems are, how big all this stuff. I'm like, that is ridiculous. 
I said, not on my watch, not in this church. So I want to talk about that because we have to be set apart. We can't go out in the world and say we're going to be the light of the world, and yet we're making the same decisions as the world, that we are in agreement with anything the world or darkness has to say when we are called to a different set of rules called the Word of God. And they kept going on and on. I said, I refuse to read any more of this study. So today is an equipping message because we have to, this is what discipleship is. It's one thing to give your life to Jesus. Like I don't even talk when people go, see in my field, it's amazing. In, in, In chiropractic, they go, oh, how many people did you see? And you know what my response is all the time? Not enough to really tick them off, you know, because it's almost like this ego contest. How many people do you see, blah, blah, blah. And what I really love is when they say it, I said, oh, I think I saw like, I don't know, 40, 50,000 this week. They look at me, just freaked out. I'm like, yeah, on the the freeway, passed a lot. I was at church on Sunday. Then I I mean, I went to the mall. There was a ton of people. We went to UTC, people everywhere, probably like 40, 50,000. They're like, you know what I mean? I'm like, you know what I mean? It's like for me, now that I'm on the church world, it's like, how many salvations you have on Sunday? I go, I don't know. I wasn't counting hands. I'm looking who's coming back, who wants to be discipled, who's coming to prayer, who's having a real transformation, who's having a God story, who's living radical for Jesus. Jesus does the saving. This, we, right here. You know what we do? The discipling. And every one of you are discipling somebody. And they're either moving closer to Jesus or further away due to your skill set on discipleship. See, before I was saved, I was taking them downtown. I was a disciple for some really good clubs downtown. That was not kingdom. But when kingdom got me, how many know that my discipleship changed? We all disciple somebody. If you're an entrepreneur, you're discipling somebody. If you're an owner of a company, guess what? You have employees. You're discipling somebody. Everything you do matters. And how many know there's a kingdom way to do it? How many know that when you're in alignment with kingdom, things are going to go in a certain order? This is what I want to talk about today. So let me read you this study real quick. I'm going to tell you that there's a real study with real science, with real research. And then I'm going to tell you what the kingdom says about what we're going to do. You guys with me today? You going to pick up what I'm putting down? Okay, some of you look ready to go. Okay. I mean, I just, give me another caffeine pill. Let's go. I should not do that. Okay, in 2017, Neuroscience Education Institute, NEI, they had a Friday session focused on the psychology of fear and its impact of wellness. Okay, this is what they they found out. It said, fear is a feeling that is internal and conscience. This is Dr. Uh, Moeller, and she has more initials. I mean, it it takes up an entire paragraph of initials at the Pacific uh, Lutheran University School of Nursing, the director of psychiatric services and integrated health. And what was interesting, it says, it arises when sensory systems in the brain that have determined in your amygdala that an external stimulus poses a threat, outputs of threat detection circuits get triggered, and a general increase in brain arousal can result in altered threat processing, mainly fear and anxiety disorders. Here's what it goes on to say. There's three general adaptation syndromes. Number one, there's an alarm. That's the first reaction to stress. It recognizes there's a danger and your whole chemistry in your body changes. Number two, you build resistance. Homeostasis begins restoring balance and a period of recovery for repair and renewal takes place even after the initial stress. Stress hormones may return to normal, but there may be reduced defenses and no adaptive energy left. Number three state of affairs is exhaustion. At this phase, the stress has continued for some time. The body's ability to resist is lost because its adaptation energy supply is gone. This is often referred to as overload, burnout, adrenal fatigue, maladaptation, or dysfunction. Alterations in the nervous system can cause several conditions such as chronic pain, fibromyalgia, and insulin resistance. Diabetes is skyrocketing right now. In and outside the church. Disease is skyrocketing right now. Now, why am I telling you this? I want you to hear some of the overall health concerns, and I need you to take inventory right now because how has stress been affecting you? Because you don't need to tell me. I read the study that Barna says 3,000% increase, whether it's inside or outside the church, but we need to be set apart. So what as a church are we going to do about it? 
I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you about it. The number one, they say overall health, immune dysfunction, immune system dysfunction, endocrine system dysfunction, autonomic nervous system alterations, sleep-wake cell disruption, eating disorders, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access disorders. I've seen all this in my practice. The potential side effects of chronic fear on physical health. Number one, chronic pain, difficulty breathing, turning into asthma. Emotional health. Disassociation from self, unable to have loving feelings, learned helplessness, anxiety, mood sweets, obsessive compulsive thoughts and disorders. Let's ask Robin, who has to deal with this all the time. Let's ask some of the other caregivers in this place, have they noticed any of that? That's just physical health. What about emotional health? I just said some of the things. How about environmental health? Continued living in fear. Generating situations due to uncertainty of moving. Not able to find safe housing. Afraid to leave your home due to paranoia. Now, chronic fear, how does it affect our spiritual health? This is what I'm seeing right here. I have a practical office where I take care of a lot of people during the week, but this is what I'm seeing from pastoral care. We've never had our pastoral care team so stretched ever in the history of Awakened Church. Thank God for every single one of you on our pastoral care team. My heart goes, we pray for you all the time. But this is what they're saying. Potential consequences for chronic fear and spiritual health. Bitterness, fear towards God or others. Confusion, disgust with God or religion. Loss of trust in God or pastors. Waiting for God to fix it. Despair related to perceived loss of spirituality. She explained, fear affects the ability to learn. This is why people are they're overwhelmed with everything. Listen to this. The brain's capacity to retrieve previous learning is dependent on specific chemical states. Chemical alterations can distort perception and understanding of information, thus distorting storage for personal choices. Now, here's the note. Don't let this offend you. I'm just speaking truth. If I know this, and I know this study, and I'm trying to equip you for good. Is it possible that men in power of influence and evil could distort it for manipulating you? They know what fear does emotionally, physically, spiritually. And if you could use it to equip yourself to arm yourself, could someone in positions of power use it to break you down? to create things in your life to make you a victim or a fear knee bowing person to that. It's very interesting because this study is wide open. Fear is a real thing and it can be triggered. My job as a pastor is to shepherd the sheep, to look after the flock, to equip you with reminding you of who God says you are. I want to put up my slide because I want to see you're the number one pharmacy ever created. Everything in you can be produced. We have lots of medical doctors in our church and I'm friends with 90% of them. The 10% that don't like me, they'll learn to like me. But look right here, happiness chemicals and how to get them. I want you to look at this one on oxytocin, the love hormone socializing, huh? What have they done to that? Physical touch. What did they do to that? Petting animals, helping others. Well, we couldn't go to church. We couldn't help others. Uh, physical touch was shut down. Socialism. How long could someone sustain and start losing oxytocin and losing love for their life, love for others? Physical abuse went up. Divorce went up. I mean, so many things, all because of that. Look at dopamine, the reward chemical. It's amazing. All these chemicals, endorphins, serotonin, all these things being manipulated if you don't do the right thing. See, there's a lot of things in our own strength. See, I don't want to play the God card all the time. See, I want to help people because, listen, you can come up on the altar, get prayed for, and get healed of diabetes immediately. But if you don't make some lifestyle changes, how many times are you going to come down to the altar? God's up there saying, ah, come on, boy. Come on, daughter, I got you. We got to be proactive on our stuff so we don't let our mind get out of balance. So if our mind got out of balance, we can get it back in balance. It's just how hard do we want to go after it? So I just want to tell you, they, they did this other study just real quick on uh, the Christian life. 
and they said that this is in Christians, they tell us, we were all born with two fears, the fear of uh, falling and the fear of noise. You kids startle when they're a baby. Anyways, they did this, um, this test. By the time you're 21 years old, they asked 500 students to list off, what are you afraid of? They listed over 7,000 fears. If you don't think the enemy works overtime to create a spirit of fear, and then what happens is the more you talk about it, the more you start getting an amen from other people. Next thing you know, you have a connect group of fear people. That's why my favorite word is cancel. Just to pattern interrupt. Not to be rude. I'll just like someone will be talking about cancel. I refuse to receive that. And then it usually rattles them because they are so programmed, they don't even know they said it. But that's why we have to renew our mind and take it serious. So I want to help us today. What do we do? Because how many of you agree we're made in the image and likeness of the Almighty God? The Creator. The Imago Dei. Like this is... But how do we get there? Because I'm not seeing in that study, that Barna study, that the Christians are set apart more than the rest of the world. This is what we got to do. I'm going to give you five quick points. You ready? Here we go. Number one, be realistic. Your fear habit is ingrained by the way you think, feel, and act, and it takes time to change. God can heal you in a moment. Go to prayer. Go to men's prayer. Go to women's prayer. God can do something in a moment. Then what are we going to do with the habits that we've created? We're a new creation. Let's step into that new creation. I mean, it was beautiful to see that communion message. I can't wait till Ryan's looking at his beautiful bride later and he's gonna know, I have no idea what he's, she said because he's going, yeah, baby, amen, amen. I mean, I love the fact he was recording it, but he, he's gonna hear his own voice. I mean, that's how a husband should be, shouting down his wife who's up here crushing a communion message. And I think a year ago, he didn't have a house or a bride. I mean, God can do anything. That's amazing. He needs to share his God story every single day. God gives seed to the sower. Do you want more seed? Then keep sowing those God stories. I mean, that's what the news does. They're sowing seeds every day. And you're sitting there like, feed me, feed me. We need the good stuff, the God stories. What what is God doing in your life? If not, go grab onto somebody's God story and don't let it go till you get your own. Do you know how many people I've seen get radical God stories that I just rode their coattails until I got a couple of my own? And then I ain't stopping. So I keep sharing them. We got to do that. But number one is be realistic. Be persistent. If you hit a snag, don't beat yourself up. If you miss men's prayer, just get up and go next time. If you miss church, do it again. If you slip up, don't beat yourself up. Call somebody and say, I need you to pray for me. I messed up today. I did this. Just be realistic. Don't set an expectation so high that you keep beating yourself up because God's not. He's got grace for you. He's got love for you. Number two is do the basics. First of all, get enough sleep. Eat good food. Drink enough water. Avoid caffeine. Just, I know I got to work on that one. It was a rough weekend. (laughs) Avoid alcohol, exercise regularly. These are the things that help your brain get back into balance. And I just want to talk about what you can do. When you move, God moves. He's not a genie in the bottle. This one guy, it was like, man, dude, we prayed for your low back pain 10 times. Can you lose 100 pounds? My daughter asked if you're pregnant. You're a dude. That's impossible. Can you just lose the gut? I'm just saying like, I I didn't want to say that to him. I wanted to be nice. Okay, so if he had a heart attack, then what are you going to say? See, Pastor Jurgen's like, dude, we're getting everyone on our team. We're going to have a staff meeting. We're going to talk about what health looks like, what good BMI looks like, everything. Sure, I want God to heal them, but guess what? It's our responsibility. Listen, if I'm shepherding their soul, their physical body comes with it. It's now time as shepherds that we hold our team to a certain level. I love that our pastor's willing to go there. He doesn't want anyone because of stress. You know, it's a little stressful running a church. All the teams and the ministries and the finance and everything that goes, it's stressful. And yet our cortisol goes through the roof. Our health will go to emotional eating, whatever it may be. We got to set the standard for our team so then we can help our church. 
we're about to switch a gear knowing what stress levels we've been under for the last two years. It's now time that we're going to pour into our own team. You're going to see a shift in anybody on staff because we care about those people that are building the kingdom. That's why we're talking about this. Number three, renew your mind. Get rid of all negative, trashy, ungodly inputs. I don't care if it's music, television, news programs, the internet, video games, reading materials. I don't, I don't care what it is. I didn't realize even how important this was. I was on Lake Powell for 10 days and after two days of no like social media, we had no electronic. It was like, me, 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 me. I, and I felt a little like, ooh, ooh, I gotta, I gotta, and I felt God just say, just be with me. Yes. It's amazing how I got so compartmentalized. I thought my 15, 30, 45 minute prayer time, my devotional was good enough. No, yeah. it's amazing. He just wanted to hang out with me, but it's amazing. The kids we were with, my friend's kids, they were losing their mind for the first two to three days. They were different kids by day seven. Yeah. Totally different, playing on the beach, doing the radical thing. It was like, and my buddy goes, whoa, I didn't realize the effect that their iPads had on them. Dopamine, 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 dopamine. It changes the way we think. So we got to renew our mind. How do we do it? We pray. Let's get biblical. You ready? Philippians 4. The Apostle Paul's answer to freedom from anxiety. Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. See, when you react to your problem with thankful prayer, peace replaces anxiety. Peace will cancel out an anxiety attack. But we got to know how to pray. Prayer becomes your habit. You'll experience peace time after time. Thankfulness becomes a habit. The more thankful, the more doubt dissipates. Remember this, God promises not to allow anything to happen to you that you cannot bear. But some maple people are willing to take their life. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says this, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way to escape that you may be able to endure it. We're not folding like a deck chair at Waken Church. We're going to rise up men and women that know who they are in Christ. The renew your mind part two is how you feel and act is a product of your thinking. We got to think better. Man, I was gone for 10 days. I missed a Sunday and a Tuesday. I was like, I can't wait to get back. I, mean, I felt bad me coming back in hot to men's prayer. I was like, I needed it. Listen to this. As a person thinks within himself, so he is. Proverbs 23, 7. See, replace the lies you believe with the truth of God. I've used this thing I'm about to show you real quick. I know I'm over, but I'm just going to teach you real quick and I'm going to pray for it because I really want practical. I'm going to teach you one thing. Romans, or in Ephesians 4, 23, and be renewed by the spirit of your mind. In Romans 12, 2, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. By what? As Christians, I need you to test what you're thinking. We, we have to do this in order to break the habits of the world of fear of the enemy you got to remember, we're, we're contending with the flesh, with the world, and with the devil. If you're not in the word of God, what are you using to contend with? And if you're not renewing this, how do you guard your heart? It says, above all else. But if you're not knowing the word of God to renew your mind, your mind is what guards your thought. If you let one of those thoughts keep going... Next thing you know, your heart hurts. If someone sent you a nasty letter or said something about you and you put an amen to it or agreed with them, your heart gets hurt. God's saying, above all else, guard your heart. You got to do it by renewing this. No, I'm not what she said about me. I'm a new creation in Christ. No, no, no. 
That's not who I be. Listen, here's a, this is a simple tool that can help you. I need you, it's a little chart. I have it right here and I'm gonna text it out. So it's overthrow to 94090. Might not be up yet because I gave it to him at four in the morning. It's unfair for my team, okay? Let me at least give me till Monday. But I literally woke up and said, I gotta change what I'm preaching on. I need to give them something practical that they can do. It's this little chart right here. You're gonna get this. It's a little chart. People listening online, calm down. Just text the thing. But here's what I want you to do. It's, it's easy things. Here's what we're going to do. It's a process. This is how you break the habit. Because see, I want to show you real quick what happens. Clue into your emotions. See your behaviors that follow your emotions. Identify the lie that you believe and replace the lie with God's truth. As you renew your thinking, you'll discover the peace and contentment you desire. Here's how you do it. So I want you to, I'm gonna give you a real thing. It's the lie, grab the emotion, look at the behavior. So under the lie, write a common negative ungodly thought, then jot down the resulting emotions. Now list the behavior under the behavior part. So here's an example. Uh, The lie, I'm stupid, or I'm not worthy, or I'll never buy a house in San Diego because I can't afford it, whatever it is. The emotion is anger, depression, loneliness. The behavior is you yell at the kids, you slam the door, or you eat two pizzas. I just want to, it could be any of those. Now, step two, under the truth, replace the lie with biblical truth or the scripture verse. Then write the likely resulting feelings under new emotion. So here's the example. Because I want to give you the example. The truth. God says that all his works are wonderful and you're made in his image. So I'm an okay person and God's gonna help me. The new emotion is that you now have hope, that you have courage, that you're gonna believe tomorrow will be better than today. The new behavior is you're gonna hug your kids. You're gonna smile more. You're gonna put that job application in for your dream job because you are worthy. You're gonna go after that house. You're not going to eat three pizzas. Chart the lies you believe, your emotions and your behaviors daily. As soon as you recognize the lie, as soon as you it. This is how you guard your heart. You replace it with truth. You recognize the lie that's renewing your mind. You replace it with truth, guarding your heart. And you ask God to help you believe his truth because you don't believe it yet. And you'll begin to see a change in your your emotions and your behaviors because you are replacing the lie with truth. That is the word of God. That is kingdom alignment. And as believers, we have to be responsible for our thoughts and what we do next. That's why he talks about the fruit of the spirit, giving you a spirit of self-control. My little boy yesterday was piping off, wasn't listening, wouldn't do it, was kind of throwing a tantrum. So I picked him up and threw him in the pool, fully clothed. He jumped out and says, I hate you. He's never talked to me that way. I said, go to your room. And when you're ready to have a conversation about it, we'll do it. 20 minutes later, my little boy came down. And he said, Daddy, I'm sorry. Gets me emotional and think about it. It's okay. I love you. You just hurt Daddy's feelings. But can we talk about it? I did this chart with my son because I've been doing it for years. We all have insecurities. We all have things we need to overcome. How did I get to this place? Because guess what? I took responsibility. That's self-leadership. Everyone's writing books on leadership. What about self-leadership? How are we going to lead our family? How can I lead my family if I can't lead myself first? So I got down with my little boy, and I said, it's okay, baby. Where did that come from, that emotion? Why were you so angry? I said, I know the devil, but it's in there, baby. Let's talk about it. And then I prayed for him. I said, if you wanted to replace it, wouldn't you replace it? I could have laughed that you threw me in the pool. We went through this whole thing. He said, Daddy, I'm really sorry. I don't mean that. At the end of the night, we always do our highs and lows of the day. He was going to bed. He told me what I thought for sure that would be a lowest day. I said, what's your high of the day? And he says that you took time to teach me and that I love you. That was his high of the day. I started crying. I'm like, oh, this stuff works. And he's six years old. It doesn't matter. It's just that we've been a certain way for so many years that we got to start somewhere. Let's start today. So I end with this because it's not that hard that the last one is just be brave. 
Faith is believing the word of God and acting upon it. That is it. What does God say about anxiety and worry? Well, basically, if you're anxious, you don't trust them. Worry is paying rent on something you'll never own. Biblical, if, I mean, if I had to give you my own words, it's temporary atheism. We either trust God or we don't with all of it. The Bible says, give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. First Peter 5, 7. Focus on the truth, not the lies. Everybody close your eyes. I'm gonna read this verse to you. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise, Philippians 4, 8. Think about those things. Fix your thoughts on what is true. How do you know what true is? I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the news says. What does the word of God say? You are a son and daughter of the most high. It doesn't matter what someone said about you, spoke about you, what your mom, teacher, preacher, dad, nobody said about you. What does God say about you? One thing that you can control is what we think. We just have to ask the Holy Spirit to help us focus our mind on Jesus Christ, on God's word, on his promises, on being thankful, getting in prayer, and know that every, the beauty of every good gift that God gives to you. I'm gonna say it again. I need you to focus on Jesus Christ. I need you to focus on God's word. I need you to focus on his promises. I need you to focus on being thankful. I need you to focus on your prayer life. And I need you to focus on every good gift that our father wants to give his kids. Focus on those things. If you can focus on those things, the rest of your life will line up. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the right way of doing things. And all these things shall be added unto you. But the Bible warns us to be on alert for the world, the flesh, and the devil will lie to you. But if you focus on the lives, you'll become more anxious and more depressed. Whatever you focus on increases. What you focus on expands. I want you to focus on the word of God. I want you to focus on the things of heaven. I want you to focus on maybe putting that song authority on, king of glory. Whatever it is, focus on the right things. So I want to pray for two groups of people. One is if you feel like you've lost your focus, I want you to stand to your feet and I'm going to pray for you. I want to pray an impartation. You feel like, you know what? I've been focusing on the wrong things, not what God wants me to do, not what I need to be focused on. If that's you, the reason why I do that is because I'm trying to get your mind and your body physically in a different place. Sure, you could sit there and it'd be the same prayer. But what happens is when you move, God moves. By you standing it changes the way that your brain stem is firing. When you get under posture, because you had to make an obedience of standing, now your brain is alert because your physiology starts to change. Your heartbeat gets a little faster. God's gonna start speaking to you. Your physiology starts to shift. When your physiology shifts, it opens a new neurological pathway that your mind can be renewed. Hearing comes by the word. And when you attach physical to it, it increases that quite substantially. I just want you to open your hands up to heaven. Second group of people is if you feel like you've let fear mandate you. You made some decisions based on fear. You're maybe contemplating whether it's moving or doing this or pulling your kids or putting here. You just have some anxiousness. You don't have peace. The level of peace that you want, I want you to stand up. I'm waiting because you know what? The devil works overtime and we can get stubborn. We let our ego get in the way. You know what ego stands for? Edging God out. I feel like you've got to shove it to the devil and stand whether you like it or not. 
It's a step of faith, I know. I'm just feeling it in my spirit. There's there's a tug of war right now with some people that know like, I, I'm not gonna say, I'm, but you know what? You got to get breakthrough and shove it to the devil. I, this is where I get righteously angry because the devil works overtime to whisper lies in your ear and you know you wanna stand and now you're getting irritated. You might even manifest on me and that's okay. I got a deliverance team ready to go. You're worth it. You're worth it. And when I start praying, if you feel that that release come, you stand to your feet. Because I can see God sending angels right now to help you. There's a battle in your mind. And it's not you. It is not you. The devil is yelling in your ear. It is not you. But I refuse to let you be intimidated right now by the enemy. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you right now for the men and women standing in faith right now. God, I thank you, Lord, that you're renewing their mind in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, that you're teaching and unlearning the things that are not of heaven, not in alignment with your word, God. Lord, that you're breaking, you're setting the captives free, that you're renewing their mind, that God, that you're a good, good God, that you have thoughts that you're thinking towards us that bring freedom, that bring liberty, God. Lord, that you're giving a spirit of boldness in these men and women. God, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to teach them how to fight in the spirit. Holy Spirit, fill them afresh. I see some of you are just dry because you haven't been praying in the spirit. Right now, just ask to receive. Holy Spirit, I want you to fill my life. You're going to have different gifts come upon you. All those gifts are already in you, but you're giving permission for the Holy Spirit to move right now. God, I thank you, Lord. Bold and courageous leaders coming out of this house. Lord, that the, the statistics won't be from this house, from Barna Group, that we will be set apart, the salt and the light, bold men and women. God, I thank you, Lord, that we get our breakthrough, that we can stand today, we can stand out there in the world, that, Lord, we can get breakthrough in our life right now. Lord, renew their minds. Take every thought captive that's not of you. God, I thank you. Like that we take on communion Sunday, the blood washes over. I just see just like the doorpost of the blood in the Old Testament, the angel of death must pass over right now. Communion, that's what it represents. The enemy must pass by your house, must pass by your mind. You're giving no foothold in your mind, your spirit, or your body for the devil to wreak any havoc. God, I thank you for a new authority in this house. I thank you for a new boldness in this house. I thank you for supernatural healing right now right now, Lord, that they will take those thoughts captive. God, that they will renew those behaviors that aren't healthy and they will be set free in the name of Jesus. Everybody said, amen. Listen, everybody stand up real quick. I'm going to bring Pastor Samuel up here just to close this out. But I want to say one thing. If you've never given your life to Jesus, none of this matters. That's the only thing that matters because eternity is on the line. I didn't read it, but I'm going to just tell you this verse real quick so you understand it. In James 4, 14, why you do not even know what tomorrow will happen. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then it vanishes. That's James 4, 14. Life is short. We never know what tomorrow is going to bring. I know a mom that just out of obedience did what she had to do in Seattle, 37 years old. And within two days, her life was gone. She leaves behind a three and a five-year-old doing what she thought was the right thing to do. You never know. Our life's like a vanish. We all need Jesus. Jesus is the only way. He's the truth and the life. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, I'm just gonna tell you this. I'm not gonna baby feed you because guess what? I wanna raise up lions up in here. I want to raise up lionesses. Here's what you do. It's this simple. It's just this simple. You don't need a pastor to lead you through. You don't need to just say, Jesus, I need you in my heart. See, God sent his son because there's sin everywhere. We all fall short. That's what the Bible says. We all fall short. So no matter what you do, you can't earn your way to heaven. There is a heaven. There is a hell. Hell was not created for you and me. But the crazy thing is, there's only one way to heaven. And that's the truth. And the truth is Jesus. And we got to know the truth and the truth will set you. And see, that's how good God is that he gave every one of us in this room a free will. It's not about how good we are. It's not how many religions. 
He doesn't want, he didn't send Jesus to start another religion. All he did was, I'm sending my son to die on a cross for you and I. He took all our sins. He was buried for three days. And then guess what? He's the only prophet that ever came up out of the ground and he sits at the right hand of God. He's alive today. Resurrection power. And he did that for you and I. He took all our sin because we couldn't handle it. And the reason I tell you that is, you just have to say that, Jesus, I need you in my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I want to spend the rest of my life in eternity. It's the only insurance policy I say you all need. And I like insurance policies. But that's the most important one. Because eternity is a lot longer than a mist or a vapor. It's eternity. And then people say, well, what about this? What about, listen, Jesus will teach you all that. You know what our job is to do? Jesus does the saving. Our job is to disciple you. Don't worry. Let's just make sure we have lots of time. Pastor Samuel loves good food. Invite him out to dinner, cook for him. Invite him to your house, whatever you want to do. But here's what I'm going to tell you. He wrote a book called Following Jesus. Someone around here has a Bible and a book, maybe. If not, Tiger will help you. Oh, there's Bruce right there. Good looking chap with a nice mustache. He's got a Bible we want to give you. We have a whole response team that wants to pray for you. He has a book called Following Jesus that Pastor Samuel wrote. You guys are so benefited. There's, I didn't write a book. He can even probably sign it for you. But listen, it's just the cliff note versions of where to start. So I just tell you this, that making that decision is the most important. Jesus in my heart, forgive me of my sins. Enter it. Let the rest of my life be the best of my life. Now show me the way. Then coming back, we'll get you plugged in. We'll disciple you. We'll get you baptized. We'll just, like this, go down the far down the rabbit hole as you want to go. But it all starts with Jesus. Everything else, it doesn't matter. We'll get there. Don't rush it. Don't worry about it. But we love you. We're glad you found us. If you don't go to our church, we'll find you a church. If you need to, watch us online till we find you the right church. That's preaching the gospel, which is freedom which is liberty, which is life. And be coachable. If you want the rest of your life to be the best of your life, be coachable. God's going to do radical things if you can believe. You know that song we sang? That miracle, wonder-working God? Do you know most churches can't even sing that song? That's the sad part. It grieves my spirit. But we can We see miracles because you know what we do? We don't put God in the box around here. We want God to do such radical things that we don't even know how to explain it. And as a pastor, that can be like scary. But I want someone to get totally resurrection healed, set free. I need people to go like, do you know who you had in your pulpit? That like six months ago, they had full addiction. Well, so what? Look at the fruit of their life now. Why are you trying to put a ceiling over their life? Where were you before you met Jesus? Listen. I want everybody. Our doors are always open. We don't discriminate. I don't care about color. I don't care about poverty. We will break that off. I want to see people to see blessed and flourished and thriving. And I want not one seat empty in this house. And you know how you do it? Because you live such an epic life that people want to know what is up with you. And they go, come and hear the word of God. This is liberty and life. And they will get an injection of faith. And you won't be able to contain this building. We'll have to find one in Oceanside. We'll have to find one in Escondido. We'll have to find one in Temecula where communion is really good. So let's just get this place packed because your life is packed with Jesus. Amen. Thanks for listening. To find out more about our locations, team, and what we do here at Awakened Church, go to awakenedchurch.com.